If you were to ask the average person today, what is magic in terms of not stage magic, but actual occult magic, sorcery, the first thing that probably come to their mind is they'll say something like Harry Potter or a more astute person might make reference to someone like Alistair Crowley or Rudolf Steiner. Although we are conditioned to believe that there's no such thing as magic and there's no such thing as sorcery, and these are all hocus-pocus superstitions, and indeed the control system goes to extreme lengths to put the likes of Dawkins, Carl Sagan, and other reductionist mystics out there to make us believe there is no such thing as the occult, the sorcery, and ritual magic, when in reality they're using it on us all the time. The most common form of magic used against us is killing magic. I'll talk about this later, but first I want to give an example of what magic actually is. Magic is nothing more than taking something that exists in imagination and then bringing it into reality. That's the definition of magic. So for instance, if you're a carpenter and you think about designing a table, you build that table, you draw a plan and then the table is brought to life from that that diagram you've made, you've actually created magic. You've brought something into reality that did not exist before. This can also be done with the idea, with the notion. You can be placed under a spell. When you ask somebody what a charm is, they'll think of a magical charm like a device. A reality is a charm. An example of a charm in the modern world would be an advertisement and TV. You're being charmed into buying something. It's used against us all the time. The greatest sorcerer of the 20th century was Sigmund Freud's nephew, Edward Bernays, who invented marketing, propaganda, and public relations, which is just another way of saying ritual sorcery. To make us believe in something that did not exist before. Everything from sexual insecurity to consumerism. A good example of how ritual magic is used within religion, look no further than the Jehovah Witnesses Bible. The Bible begins in Genesis with the usual story of God creating the earth, the usual seven day story we're given. But suddenly, several paragraphs into the Genesis story, the term God is replaced with something called the Jehovah God. This is a classic magic sleight of hand. What is happening here is that the the people who founded the Jehovah Witnesses Church weren't actually worshipping the God of the Old Testament. They were worshipping a psychopathic demon named Jehovah. And this psychopathic demon named Jehovah, through a sleight of hand, is inserted into the book of Genesis to make people believe they're actually worshipping the God of the Bible, the God of the Judeo-Christian Bible, when in reality they're worshipping a demon. This is how the psychopathic magi work. The sleight of hand is very much an important aspect of their control. Now take a look at this graphic. This is called the Hand of Duality. The 19th century occultist Aphaeus Levi designed this curious wood engraving to illustrate the esoteric concerns for the role of dualism in the occult. This was a hand raised in benediction towards Jehovah. The shadow of the hand created upon the wall creates a shadow of a horned devil. This is called a malediction. This is what they're showing us, that the demon Jehovah is not actually God, it's a demon. And this is how magic works. The hand and the shadow cannot be separated. Light and darkness are inextricably interwoven on the earthly plane. And this goes on today more than ever. As I mentioned, Edward Bernays was the creator of propaganda, public relations and marketing in the early 20th century, but his primary purpose was to spell the United States population and bring them into World War I. And an important aspect of this occult sorcery that's used upon us is killing magic. The most common method of this is war movies. Prior to every major conflict, there's always a war movie. The Four Feathers was released in 1939 to bring English men of the English-speaking world into World War II, this rally the troops, to spellbind them that if they stayed behind they were cowards. And this continued through the Vietnam War, you had uh, John, John Wayne in the Green Berets, and before the first Gulf War you had Tom Cruise and Top Gun, and before the second Gulf War you had, you had garbage like Jarhead, convincing naive and generally well-intentioned Americans to enter into processing units 
at places like Fort Dix and Fort Bragg in order to be converted into mu murderous, mindless killbots and cannon fodder for the same corporations who are spellbinding us with their logos and advertising. This is what killing magic is. Killing magic really began back in Neolithic times with paintings of cave art. It's also called haunting magic. Here we see a typical example of killing magic from the Neolithic age. It's a prehistoric cave painting of a running horse with an arrow directed towards its back. Many of the cave paintings in prehistoric Europe appear to have a magical purpose. Some are quite certainly involved with the ritual killing of the image as a part of the hunt magic. Such magic is rooted in the notion that for an event to occur on the earthly plane, it must already be enacted on the astral plane. And this is what advertising and mass media does. It creates a false notion of who you are, what you are, in terms of everything from your social status, your religion, to even the very idea of patriotism. And from that, you believe this spell that you're placed under. And none of it is real. Just like the killing magic isn't real. Well, it shouldn't be real. And it certainly shouldn't be real if you can think for yourself. This is the problem. We've been educated out of the ability to think for ourselves. But the over activation of our left brain, that we never actually reach self-actualization in terms of our own psychology, the result being we're cannon fodder. Just for the military, but from everything from corporations to religions. That's killing magic. Wake up.